Welcome fellow folders to part 3 of my most ambitious origami creation so far. In part 1 I talked about the hardest paper I made which I will need to retitle to match this series. Part 2 was um, making the mosquito, finishing it, showing it, which will upload in a few days from making this video. So by the time this uploads you will, will have already, most likely have seen that video. Now, Part 3 is all about the equipment I'm going to use to make the mould and cast the resin, do everything and talk about the actual moulds that I'm going to be using, test moulds, uh, official mould, we'll go through all of that. But first things first, we're going to go through everything on this table that I might need in order to make this um, creation. By the time you're watching this, um, I have COVID at the moment, it's the second day of having COVID. I tested positive yesterday, um, but yeah, it's only a sore throat I have everyone. It's only a sore throat. So, first things first, might as well start off with the resin that I will be using. Now, I do have more resin arriving, um, a brand from Australia. Now this brand is what a YouTuber used. Uh, uses in every single project that he uses. He does small pours, large pours, all-in-one volume pours, massive pours, tiny pours, um, using that, re uh, that resin brand which is just resin and it turns out crystal clear perfectly every single time. So the plan is I may make a few more test moulds and then just use this resin just for testing and then wait for the other uh, brand to arrive which should hopefully be quite quick. I did buy the, the expensive express delivery option because it is coming from Australia, it's all the way around the world. I could take forever but use this for testing and then use the Just Resin for the actual casting of the mosquito. So the brand is the Craft, Craft Resin. Now this I got this from Amazon. This resin uh, is the highest rated 5 star resin on Amazon. I did do a bit of research on which resin I should use uh, prior to what to buy. Um, I did see a brand that a YouTuber also used called Gallon Art Resin. but. That arrived rock solid and it's been returned so I won't be using that. But yeah, so I'm going to use this for a few test folds. I do have a test mould made already for this but I will make some more um, to do more testing. So we have again craft resin and then because the mosquito, how it is in real life, is in amber resin the amber colour, I'm going to colour it, let's see if I get this in focus, so it is a lemon resin colourant and it looks um, very cool, like amber like, so I'm going to be colouring it to this, so I think that will work really nicely, again it will all be about the testing, hopefully by the end of this video I will have this tiny mould, which I will talk about in a minute, filled up with amber resin with this. Next we have just the assortment of gloves. Um, most residents say wear gloves. Uh, every time I bought something it came with gloves so I've got lots of glo uh, gloves, three sets of gloves, um, more than one pair of each near enough. So I've got plenty of gloves to use. I also have a gas mask um, for the fumes. I don't know if there will be many fumes. Yeah so I don't know if you can read this. That says, there we go, we are odourless, non-toxic, no VOCs, non-flammable, bubble, bubble 3. So hopefully, I don't need to wear this, I will wear it anyway. I will do the, the normal sniff test during the testing to see if there is many fumes. So this takes 24 hours to dry. So again, a lot of testing that needs to be done. So we have the gas mask, we have goggles as well, again to protect the eyes doesn't say anything about it. Some say it may cause irritation on the skin if you get it in contact with the skin, which I don't plan on doing because I've got all the safety equipment. 
So we have the gas mask, the goggles, the gloves. We have an assortment of mixing tools for mixing the resin because you mix equal parts of the resin and the hardener. Then you put it in like a jug, you mix it for about five minutes until it's crystal clear. And then I just these are little mini mixing spatulas as you can see. Um say you just mix it. So I've got plenty of those to use with. Try, play about, see which one works the best. Now, probably the most important part is this right here, which is acrylic sheets. And this is what makes up the actual mould of the resin and the mould that you will be casting in. That I, I will be casting in. So acrylic sheets, the, these are one millimetre thick. The test is one millimetre thick as well. So this is what I'll be testing, which I'll talk about in just a minute. The actual moulds are two millimetre thick, so double the thickness. And it has a protective layer on it, so you just peel it off this side and peel it off that side. And then you just have near enough glass like, but it's acrylic. So it's not actually glass. So it's really cool. Next we have the hot glue gun. Now this is important because when you make the mould like this, it has tape all around it to hold it all together and sturdy. But because it's all sturdy and held together and compact, that doesn't mean it's waterproof or leak proof. So what you then need to do is go around all the sides with the liquid glue and fill up any gaps. So this right here should be leak proof through. When I fill this with resin it shouldn't leak anywhere whatsoever. So I just need to go over each of these wee bits which I will do in this video. Next we have just measuring jugs little uh, measuring drugs so what I will do is just fill up each one because the resin is equal parts it's not in weight because uh, one of these one of the resin and one of the hardener could weigh different weights they will they will be different weights so that's why it, it is an either way and equal measurements which I would weigh or equal volume so I'll fill up one of these and then however much I need to the the volume and then pour it all in a jug, mix it, and then colour and cast. So these will come in very handy. And I've got loads as well, loads of them here. And then we just have scissors and tape which I use to tape all the sides together. Next we have sandpaper. Now I don't think I will actually need this because if you don't know when you make resin if you turn it on like your equipment um, I don't remember the name of it um, make it like round it will be really rough so you need to go through all the layers of sandpaper to make it smooth as possible and then uh, polish at the end but I don't plan on doing that which I will tell you why when I go through the, the mould. Next we have some silicon heat proof mats which I can um, cast the resin on because when you mix both resins together as they cure they give off a lot of heat. So I will have two sets of these on top of each other on a towel on another surface. I'll have it cast in right here and curing right here. With all the windows open for ventilation and the coolest part is the last but coolest part I believe I've cut oh yeah I've got a few more bits but we have ultraviolet resin now this is basically a liquid glue it's not a glue but it's a resin but it looks just like a glue and you'd pour some out where's the torch where'd I put the torch Here we go. This isn't an ordinary torch, this is a UV torch. 
this ultraviolet and when you pour some of this glue on a surface put the ultraviolet light on it it will dry rock solid instantaneously in a matter of seconds like that so that's how I stuck the bottom part of the mould onto this plexiglass and it's rock solid so it's really cool and last but not least we have again a little mini ruler which I use to make the mould make the measurements a scalpel tool to engrave my measurements and then invisible wire I don't know if you can see this on video Yeah, it's near, no, it's near impossible to see, but it is invisible, uh, invisible, um, made of nylon, and I will be using this to hopefully make the mosquito in the mould. So that is everything that I will be using. Next, let's clear this table and finish off this mould. Now for the mould. Now what we have here is the test mould which I will be using for uh, testing the actual resin I'm doing a few tests all in one I may make a few more of these just to do a few more tests like a, a bigger volume etc but here we have the test mould I'll just let you have a little look Now originally when I made this test mould I would measure out a distance, I would take a ruler and then use the scalpel tool to make a score and then snap it off and then I'd have I'd do that for three more sides and then sellotape them together and then liquid glue the outsides and the sides and then uh, UV resin the bottom to another piece but when I realised that snapping it didn't leave exactly clean edges Maybe I never uh, pressed down hard enough, but I just I never left super clean edges. Whereas I would snap it and it would be a tiny bit left, which would make it near enough impossible to um, s uh, neatly and smoothly line up another side with it because they, they would be a tiny bit sticking out. But in this test, um, I never did that with the actual mould. I will show you what I did in a second. For this test, we are going to do a few a, a few tests all in one. We're going to fill up full. Sometimes resins say only do half pours, so like half, let it dry, and then another half, which would be fine. But because I am colouring this resin amber colour, I would make it tricky to have both different mixes the same colour. I could do that, and then the bottom could be much darker, and then the top could be much lighter. So there would be a big difference and then you would see the split level, the line between the two resins which you can even see in clear resin without colouring so I don't know if I want to do it in one and in, in half pours so I'm going to fill this up full completely next we have invisible thread it's starting a bit hard to see because it's invisible but anyway we have invisible thread starting from here which I just used some ultraviolet resin to stick and hold it together and then it comes down all the way to the bottom corner you may be able to see it because there is some ultraviolet resin stuck onto the, th the, the thread and this test is simply to see if I'm able to see this um, thread in the, in the finished resin once I colour the resin, cast it, once it dries, once I peel off the sides I want to see if I can see this thread because if I can't then it will be absolutely perfect for my my way of doing this I'm going to have the mosquito floating and invisible thread holding it in the exact centre of the actual mould so it doesn't move about so that is basically that also I've got a bit of paper there as well just to see how it reacts which again is stuck to the invisible thread with uh, ultraviolet resin now, here we have actual mould, which is a 4x4 four four inch. I just used four squares on my cutting mat to line up and measure mark and cut. 
and um, this is how high I will be filling it. So it will be quite a big uh, resin mould and so uh, yeah I, I never uh, broke the glass because I wanted to have completely smooth edges sticking to each other as tight and neatly and compact as possible and leak pro uh, proof as possible as well. So I just measured and marked each piece, uh, scored it, I also scored the halfway line because I plan to attach invisible thread to the bottom, up to the top, have the mosquito attached to the bottom of it, I will be cut in two pieces, the end of the first one will stick to the bottom of the mosquito and the top will come up and I'll make a little mould here to hold it in place so I can tell that the mosquito will be perfectly in centre of the resin both directions, they all have the, 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 the middle measured and marked and on the bottom as well and I think it's a lot more neater than trying to break it off I just, I never, all the tests I did of scoring it, breaking it, I never broke off neat so I think this is a much better way and this is the 2mm plexiglass I feel this would be a lot easier to peel off when it's all dried uh, the resin is all solid and cured. So yeah, that is it. Let's get to glowing up all of these gaps and make it completely airtight and leak proof. Right, so I decided to use uh, the head mount instead of the actual chest mount. It's, it's more, it's higher up. So first of all, I'm going to turn on the glue gun just to let it heat, heat up. It takes about five minutes. And there we go, and I'll just balance it like this. If it does. I did it, did it yesterday, anyway. Should be fine. So next, I am going to stick this onto this, that way I can glue this part as well because if I don't do that I can't glue here, I could but then it would stick out and it wouldn't lie flat or level, it would be out of balance so I'm going to stick it like this so ultraviolet resin and then let me just see first Okay. Just want to make sure I'm getting all. Yep. I oh, hear as well. Yeah, I've got, yeah, I've already got there. So that should be enough. I haven't got any there, that's fine, that's fine, don't need to do that. And then ultraviolet torch. Oops, it's flashing. And I also made sure that when I made the mould and I put it together, I made sure to leave the scored side on the outside so that way it doesn't leave any marks on the resin. And of course the tape on the outside as well, so it's perfectly clear and smooth in here. And just like that, it's stuck. And I'll just hit it with this side as well, just to make sure.
and we're good to go. That is it. That that is all it takes. That's how quick it is. Oh, running was oh, the glue's running, so I think that's a good sign. Next, um, so now that we have this part underneath, I can successfully add the glue here and here, so that way I can fully lock in place all the sides and make it completely leak proof. So the glue gun is hot enough, now we are just basically going to start uh, sealing up all the sides. I'll do the bottom first, I'll let it dry and then I'll turn it and then do all the sides so, so it doesn't stick. So if I do it standing like this, I could pour down so I think that's the, the best way to do it. And if I make a mess I can just wipe it on here. So let's see if this pull the safety card up. In fact, let's do here first. Yeah, that's fine. And I'll probably use quite a lot of this. I just want to make sure that it's fully sealed. And this glue comes off yeah, easy as well. It's, a, it's like a flexible soft glue. So it just peels off. When I want it to, when it's all dry, I can just snap it off. And I, I don't know if you can see already that it's starting to dry up where I first started doing it, it's starting to go. And then here, and this will be the last one before. I'll turn it over, I'll do this, I'll stop the cameras, I'll check to make sure it's all done. I'll give it like 10 minutes and then I'll flip over to do the sides. No. Yep, all looks sealed. Just going to add another protective layer. Again, I just want to make sure this is 100% leak proof. I don't want to go through all this to pour the resin and then it's, it leaks and wee gaps. But I'm not expecting to get a perfectly uh, four inch cube because when you look at the actual real thing, they're not perfect, they're all rough, they're all broken, they're all scratched to show the edge of time. So I'm not too worried if some parts don't work.
the final one. Yeah, in fact, no, I've already done this side, I've done that side, so that's fine. So let's turn this off, unplug it, and then we'll give this 10 minutes to cool, and then we'll do the sides. Now we can do the sides. I don't need to go all the way up to the top because uh, the mould will end there. That's where, where the full line will be. Right, next. It's not going down, is it? Well, I can come back to it anyway. Yeah, that's staying, staying nicely put. I hold this one actually. Nicely, very nicely done. There. Then I'll add a wee bit more to here. Then once this is done, we are done. We are good to go. We are good to start testing with the test, the test mode.
that is it. We are done. All sides sealed. No leakage, hopefully. Yeah, I am very happy with that. Um, I'm, I'm going to let it fully dry and then I am going to check it off camera to make sure I've got all. And then once it's fully dry, I'll touch up any parts if I have missed any. And then it's ready to fill with the mosquito on it. So that is the plan.